Hi, Maria here. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you what I wore and I ended up testing out uh, a bunch of fragrances uh, that I experienced over at Danny from Deep Green Beauty's place. She had a bunch of dupes for high-end fragrances and so I'm excited to bring you uh, my thoughts on those and whether you should purchase them, whether you should pass on them and buy the real thing. So I can't wait to share. But before I get started, if you haven't subscribed, just go ahead and hit that button. Join the Weird and Wonderful family. It would be amazing to have you part of the community. And without further ado, let's get into this. So the first one that is not a dupe for anything that I have now finally, officially made up my mind on is Yara by Latafa. So I have tried this one uh, like five or six times. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. It's definitely going to be uh, decluttered. I, I don't understand the hype on this one at all. So we all smell something different. Some people have said that it smells a little bit lotiony to them. Um, and I would say that, yeah, I guess that's, that's what I get out of this kind of a lotiony powdery sweetness. I don't get any of the fruit. I just get some sharpness. And to be honest, lotion smell like just straight up like jergens or anything like that has always creeped me out i don't know why but it actually makes me feel a little bit sick so i've never been able to wear the jergens smell so you know when you think lotion i think jergens and so i'm not saying this smells like jergens lotion but it's just kind of powdery blondness to me i think it's boring i think it's synthetic I think it's, uh, I just think it's lackluster. Now I know a lot of people love this and that's the beauty of fragrance is that we're so subjective, but I cannot get behind this. I don't think it's worth the hype. I don't think it's worth the $30. So even though it's a super affordable fragrance, I would not buy this. So that's my, that's my final thoughts, guys. Final thoughts. It took me a while to get there, but I, anytime I put this on, I don't enjoy it. I can't wait till I can't smell it anymore. It's boring. It smells synthetic and sharp and I don't, I don't get it. So it's an, it's a major pass for me. I've got three fragrances that are relatively new, uh, two I'd never smelled before. Uh, and so I'm going to share those with you before I share the dupes. So, um, I talked about this last week, Scent is a Language by Melic Perfumes. So I'm almost out of my little, um, my little tester because I am so freaking in love with this. Like it smells so, so good. So can I even get anything out of there anymore? There we go. It is sugary, it is sweet, it is passion fruit. It lasts a long time on the skin. Like I'm saying, eight to 10 hours. Uh, it's perfect for spring and summer. Uh, the star of the show is passion fruit. I know there's cotton candy. I think there's cashmere in there in the base. I can't remember the florals in it, but it is such a happy, jubilant, right up my alley fragrance. I'm in love with it. Um, I, I think it's relatively new cause I don't think I've heard anyone talk about it, but if you like a passion fruit, juicy cotton candy, kind of cocktail-y feeling drink, uh, or <laughs> fragrance, this is going to be up your alley. Like I just, and what I love about it, I think is so often with a fruity fragrance, that's uber sugary is I find they don't stick around for very long, but this sticks around amazingly. So I absolutely love this. I've got to tell you guys, um, I've got a window like right there and we have a ghost magpie. Uh, and I don't know if you guys have ever heard of them. Apparently Edmonton is the ghost magpie capital of the world. So it's kind of like an albino magpie. Magpies are really annoying, but this one just stays around our house in the yard, like it, uh, around a three house area. And we know it's, it's the same one because they're, you know, you don't see them every day. So it's come and it's so cool because where uh, a magpie is black, it's a very, very light gray. It's the coolest looking thing ever, but it was just kind of over here watching me film. So anyway, some of you don't care at all. I just, I just think it's so unique. Apparently the only way you get a ghost magpie is if two ghost magpies uh, mate because it's a recessive gene. So for some reason we've got quite a few of them, but I, they're very, very rare. So very exciting. 
Okay, almost as exciting as this fragrance. No, this is this fragrance way more exciting. So I am in love with this fragrance. I've worn it like all like as many times as this freaking uh, sample would allow. I've worn and it's 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 an obsession. I I love it. I love it. Now Danny from Deep Green Beauty was nice enough to lend me her Boho Boco uh, um, discovery kit. So there's twelve fragrances in here. Uh, can't wait to try them all, uh, but I thought I would try the two that I was most kind of excited about. The first one was Coffee and White Flowers. Now, um, first of all, this Discovery Kit, I know I'm on Discovery Kits lately, but uh, this Discovery Kit is so cool. Like, it's a very neat setup. Like, I just think it looks so posh. And these little tabs, they're paper, but you pull it and the fragrance pops up. So I just I just think it's really, really beautiful as far as its presentation. It's minimal, but there's some cool aspects to it that just make it, it's awesome. So what I'll, I'll do with the two Boho Bocos that I checked out is I'm gonna read the notes for you. So the opening has chocolate, cinnamon, and cloves. Yes, please. Yes, please. The middle notes are coffee, cacao, and white flowers. Again, yes, please. And the base is rum, vanilla, and leather. So I was so uber excited to try this fragrance on. Uh, first of all, the longevity was really pretty decent. Like I got at least six hours out of it. It starts off very sweet, very sugary coffee is, is what I get. So I don't really notice the chocolate. I'm noticing the coffee. Now, as that dries down, I start to get uh, a little bit of the white floral. So, um, you know, I don't know what white flowers are in. I don't know what the florals would be in it, but it doesn't smell like orange blossom to me. Uh, but it's just kind of a mixture of white florals, according to this. It reminds me, the floral component reminds me a little bit of something like a passe or deja vu white flowers. So that kind of floral combination is kind of what I get out of this. So it's just kind of a beautiful mixture of floral with the coffee. Surprisingly, it really does work. And then as it dries down, it becomes a very sugary, sweet coffee again. So the, the white florals, although they're present, they kind of dissipate uh, after the first two hours and you're left with more of a skin scent uh, that smells very sweet, very vanillic. There's a little bit of booziness. I don't get the leather. I don't get a whole lot of the cinnamon chocolate cloves, although it does smell more like a baked good, like a coffee, uh, coffee pastry type feel than it does like a coffee drink. So um, I, I did enjoy it, but it wouldn't be the coffee fragrance that I would go for. For whatever reason, if, it's, if it smells like a coffee, so like not a sweetened coffee, but coffee and cream, I really enjoy that. I really enjoy black coffee fragrances. I enjoy coffee with a little bit of spice in it. Uh, but as soon as it starts to get too sweet and it almost becomes like a baked good, uh, for whatever reason, that doesn't really thrill me. So although this was beautiful and I can see a lot of people really, really liking that, that said, I really like Cafe Cabanel. But this one reminds me of Coffee Addict from Theodoros whatever, whatever. Uh, it smells a little bit more like that. So that sweet, sweet, sweet coffee feel. Uh, that's what you're getting in here. So if that's your vibe, I think it's definitely worth a sniff. Really impressed with the quality, really impressed with the longevity, but it's just not really my vibe. The next fragrance by Boho Boco that I was really excited to try was Wet Cherry Liqueur. This one has been so uber hyped up on Instagram, especially. Uh, so I was really, really, really excited to try this one. Gonna read the notes. Okay, I can smell the sample uh, and my mouth is starting to water. So uh, to open with, you have cherry and you have liqueur. Middle notes are cherry, strawberry, caramel, and Turkish rose. And the base is tonka bean, vanilla, sandalwood, and vetiver. So straight up with this fragrance, first of all, it is an enjoyable fragrance to wear. So uh, like I thought it was fun to wear it. Um, it wouldn't be one that I would consider to be like the be all and end all in the cherry department. 
So for me, I am stuck on Tom Ford's Lost Cherry. I love that cherry note. So I love it in Love Fest Burning Cherry. I love it in uh, Navitus Venom of Love. So all of those have a similar cherry vibe. Now I know on Fragrantica, it shows this one as uh, being similar to those. So the first one up is uh, Lost Cherry. I don't think it's like Lost Cherry at all. I don't actually even consider it overly boozy. So in the air, like when I smell it, when I spray it, it does smell boozy. The cherry note is a little bit of a lighter cherry. So I find the cherry in uh, Lost Cherry to be a little bit more deep, a little bit more dark, uh, a little bit more, a little bit more boozy. This one's a little bit of a lighter cherry with the booze. So I really, really enjoy the opening of this fragrance, but as it dries down on the skin, the cherry note becomes a lot sweeter and a lot more light and bright, and it loses the booziness. That makes sense to me, seeing as there's strawberry and caramel in this. I don't really get any rose in it, but it definitely becomes quite sweet, quite bright, quite light. So this is a great cherry fragrance to me if you wanna smell sexy. Uh, but you want to keep it a little bit brighter. Whereas Tom Ford, as soon as it starts to dry down, it gets a little bit deeper, a little bit more mysterious, a little bit more woody feeling. Uh, same thing with Love Fest Burning Cherry. Instead of the woodiness, you get a little bit of a, a fire burning, like the Gayak wood feel. Uh, comes in with uh, Love Fest Burning Cherry. And then with the Venom of Love, you're getting that chocolate that comes in. This one, you're getting more Tonka Bean, I would say, and maybe a hint of that vetiver. So there is a little hint of woodiness, but it's more, it comes across more kind of almost like tannins to me where it's, it feels a little bit dry. Uh, so this was a very nice fragrance. I think that this would be nice for more the summertime. If you want a great quality cherry fragrance for the summer, uh, this would be actually a great option, especially if you are a major cherry fan. Um, that said, I, I would like to see this actually compared to Electric Cherry by Tom Ford. I think that's what it's called. He's got those two new ones out. Like I think there's the Smoke Cherry and the Electric Cherry. I've smelt both of them. And I would say like when I smelt this, I thought of the Electric Cherry. So it smells a little lighter, brighter, if that makes sense. Uh, this still has the booze, uh, but the booze kind of dissipates quite quickly and you're left with that bright ch cherry, uh, you know, with that strawberry influence in there. Uh, yeah, weigh in if you've smelt either one of these uh, and what your thoughts are on it. I do enjoy it. It certainly uh, doesn't beat out Lost Cherry for me. It doesn't beat out Venom of Love or Love Fest Burning Cherry, uh, but it it also, to me, doesn't fit in that category. So this is kind of on its own. It's a little bit lighter, brighter. It's, it's still... Um, it's still got enough presence and enough depth that I wouldn't put it in with La Petite Robe Noire by Guerlain, where it's um, where it's kind of that bright, airy, a uh, little bit synthetic. This smells like an authentic, decent cherry, uh, but it's just not got the the richness that Lost Cherry has. Uh, yeah, I hope that that makes sense. This wouldn't be one that I would rush out to purchase. Uh, but I, I like it at the same time. So I can get the hype, I guess. So it is very, very nice. Uh, to me, there's so many cherries out there now that, uh, you know, I'm not sure I would put this near the top. Uh, but I think it's a great option for kind of your spring or summer. If you like cherry, but you want a little bit of sexiness in there. This, this 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 would work. Okay, the next one. Now these uh, these are also from uh, Danny from Deep Green Beauty. If you don't follow her on Instagram, you need to go follow her. She is a wonderful person. Has a beautiful Instagram page. Uh, that you need to check out. So I'll leave her link down below if you're interested. So this fragrance uh, has also, I believe, gotten quite a lot of hype and it's called Kaila Black by Paris Corner and it's supposed to be a dupe for invite only. I think the price range on these uh, Paris Corner fragrances is, is around $50 US, maybe give or take. Um, so when I smell it on the cap, it smells similar to invite only, um, but not quite quite identical. When I put them on the skin, this 
is what I wish this smelled like. When I spray Invite Only Amber 23 or when I smell it on the cap, my mouth just waters. It's delicious. It's inviting. It's sensual. It's spicy. It's just everything that I want in a fragrance. But for whatever reason, when I put this on my skin, it doesn't work for me. Honestly, it smells a little bit cheap. I, I know a lot of people love it. And what I smell on the cap, I think is what most people experience when they wear it. But on my skin, it doesn't work with my skin chemistry and it comes across really synthetic smelling. And um, and the, like, honestly, I start to think of a little bit of plastic, a little bit of like a little bit of, well, honestly, some fragrances somehow remind me of diapers. This one reminds me of diapers on me. So it doesn't remind me of diapers when I smell it on the cab, but on my skin, it just goes weird. This one, however, it smells like what this smells like on the cap on my skin. So I am in love with this. So it's called Kahila Black. Kahila, I think that's how you say it. Uh, Kahila Black. It has, it's the bottle. I don't like the bottle. It's this black bottle with the horse you're seeing it. Not my, not my bag at all, but the fragrance. It, it's so long lasting, like way more long lasting than invite only for sure. So the longevity is better. It projects beautifully. And I just smelled so freaking luscious all day. Like I was so thrilled with myself. Like I, I, I finally, I finally understood the hype of this with this because this is just so good. So this is <laughs> definitely one that I'm gonna, I'm not gonna get it right away. I'm gonna get it in the fall and the winter because it definitely feels more fall winter appropriate. Here we've been having like weird weather. So it's supposed to get hot soon, but it's been really cold. So this was just gorgeous, cozy, delicious, spicy, sensual, sexy awesomeness that lasted a really, really long time, like a good seven, eight hours and decent projection. Like I was so impressed with this. So yeah, I've got a nice size sample, but this is definitely one that I do want to add to my collection for sure. Okay, the next uh, kind of dupe fragrance is Club de Nuit Imperial. So Club de Nuit is put out by Armoff. So super affordable. Uh, there's quite a few that Armoff has put out by in the Club de Nuit line. I think one is similar to Noir de Noir by Tom Ford. Another one's like Coco Mademoiselle. So this one, Club de Nuit, it's white Imperial, is uh, duping Delina Exclusif. So I wore both of them. I don't think that they're identical. So I, I have yet to smell an excellent dupe of Delina Exclusive. Does this smell like Delina Exclusive? Yes. So if you're not really picking it apart and you just spray it on your skin, uh, likely you're going to think, oh, that smells like Delina Exclusive. Likely if someone walks by, they're going to smell it and think, oh, that's Delina Exclusive. So, um, you know, from that perspective, I think it is a close enough dupe, but I don't think it's identical by any means. So by that, the issue is um, Delina Exclusive, there's a roundness to the fragrance. There's a powdery quality. Uh, there's like, it's it's very complex. There's, um, there's a depth there somehow. Uh, and it's just really, it's a very unique fragrance. What I find happens with dupes is they can't get that roundness. So they can get a similar vibe. And, and, you know, like I said, if someone smelt the sillage, they'd probably think it was a Delina exclusive. But for me, like being Delina exclusive is, is honestly one of my favorite fragrances. Um, it's not close enough for me to want to, to necessarily buy this over this. I wouldn't be upset if I had this, uh, but I'd rather save my money and buy this. With Amber Invite Only, I'd rather buy the dupe. I'd rather save my money and buy the dupe. With this one, I'd rather save my money and buy the real thing. So Club de Nuit uh, Imperial, the overall vibe is similar. And in the dry down, like so about an hour in, they, very, they smell very, very close. For me, the Club de Nuit Imperial has a bit of a metallic vibe. Uh, so it's a little bit more of a metallic rose rather than a jammy powdery rose in the opening. Uh, so to me, the, that is different. 
um, and it doesn't quite get the same depth that the original does, in my opinion, in that dry down. The original smells a little bit more soft, a little bit sweeter, a little bit more powdery. This one, uh, the Club de Nuit Imperial, it smells sweet, but there's always a little bit of a metallic edge for me. Um, and it's not as round and powdery. It's not as fluffy feeling, I guess. Uh, and the depth isn't quite there. Also, there's a little bit of a bittery quality that comes out on my skin. Again, it could be just the way that my skin plays with this. So um, I do enjoy it, uh, but it's it reminds me actually a little bit more of Betty Alud Amethyst. Uh, a little bit more like that as far as the metallic quality that I find in that fragrance. Um, yeah, so is it a, is it exact? No, I would rather have the original. That's that's all there is to it. Is it a half decent dupe? Yeah, uh, but I, I like the original better for sure. Now, the last one that I tried is Barracat Gentle Gold by Fragrance World. Now, uh, that is duping Gentle Fluidity Gold by MFK. Now, the thing that's kind of sad about this company, like um, with the Armoff company, with uh, Paris Corner, I'm not seeing that they're duping the whole entire thing. So they're not knocking off. They say they're an inspired version, that kind of thing. Uh, with the Barricat Gentle Gold, I think they say they're inspired, but they've inspired everything. So their packaging looks just like the MFK bottle. So when it gets into that kind of aspect, I feel a little cringy because it's like they're really, really copying. It's obviously not like it's not a knockoff because it's not called the exact same thing. But you know what I mean? Like when you start doing that, it, it feels a little bit, a little bit cringy. Uh, that said, I want to get the Barracat Gentle Gold. It's an absolute stunning fragrance. So I'm in love with this. I would love the Gentle Fluidity Gold. Like <laughs> I have the coins to buy this. I've run out of the sample. I kind of want to get a little bit more of this one to try just to really see. I tried putting this on my skin. I had a little bit left in here. Uh, they seemed similar, but it's not the same as if you sprayed it. I had to kind of do this and dab out the, the extra. So it smells similar. They smell very similar, uh, but I can't really speak to how close it is, uh, like really get nitpicky. That said, I am in love with this. Like I put it on and I just kept on spraying and spraying because I loved it so much. Uh, decent, decent projection on this. It lasted a really great amount of time on the skin as well, like a good eight nine hours at least. So the notes in Gentle Gold or Gentle Fluidity Gold are vanilla, amber, musk, woody notes, juniper berries, nutmeg, and coriander. I don't know why, but I find that this one smells somehow fruity. Like there's fruit, there's vanilla, like somehow it comes across fruity to me. So a little bit fruity, a little bit vanilla, a little bit spicy, a little bit like it's just it's just freaking sexy. I just love it. So um, I I love the original, but this one, this one's so good. And even though the bottle is so similar that it feels a little cringy, they do say right on the site that it's inspired by this. So they're not, they're not knocking it off. They're giving homage to this one, but it is so delicious. The longevity is amazing. I was so, so impressed with this. Runs about 60 bucks for 100 mils. So I am in love with this and I'm totally going to get it because it's so delicious. So out of all the dupes, I'm definitely getting the Amber Invite Only dupe for sure. Uh, definitely uh, going to get this uh, Barracat Gentle Gold. I think I'm going to get this one as soon as possible. It's right now sold out pretty much everywhere. But as soon as it's available, I'm going to get it because uh, it's one that's just beautiful in the summer and spring too. Like it's kind of an all year round fragrance to me. I just think it's stunning. And so uh, of course, if I had the shekels, I would buy the real thing. Uh, but I don't, and so I totally want to get the inspired version. So uh, as far as dupes are concerned, really, really enjoyed two of them, thought that they were really great. Uh, the the Parfums de Marley dupe, Club de Nuit Imperial, 
it was close, but for me, not quite close because I really, really have a massive like love for a Delina exclusive. So uh, not quite, but pretty darn close. So that was my experience. Overall, really enjoyed the exploration that I had today and really glad to finally go, this is not my cup of tea and it's definitely going bye-bye. Really glad to finally make that decision. Uh, and overall, like so much fun trying out all these new fragrances. So what about you? Did you try anything new? Did you have a major hit? Did you have one where you're like, I got to get rid of this? Leave it in the comments. And other than that, I hope you have an amazing week and we'll talk to you soon.